the cornerstone of Morocco's foreign policy is in relation to the Western Sahara issue. King Mohammed VI on August 20th delivered a speech and he stated this fact very clearly. He said that Morocco's foreign policy is perceived through the lens of the country's position in relation to the Western Sahara. As far as Tunisia, Tunisia's actions with the TICAD is quite perplexing. Tunisia have never recognized Polisario. So Tunisia tried to portray the issue as it was a normal issue and the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, so-called, is a member in the African Union. Nevertheless, the Japanese, who are the co-host of this forum, said that the presence of any entity which Japan does not recognize as a sovereign state at the TICAD, including senior officials meeting, does not affect the position of Japan regarding the status of this entity. They recognize Morocco's territorial integrity. They are in line with the United Nations resolution. So President Kaysai is facing tremendous pressures domestically, in addition to the economic pressures due to the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And he met last month with the Algerian uh, President Taboon. Algeria is the main provider of Tunisia's energy. And we think that there is a deal or pressures exercised by Algeria in that issue. The African Union reportedly issued a memorandum asking all members of the grouping, including the commander of the Polisario Front Movement, to attend the Tokyo International Meeting in Tunisia. And according to the announcement, Brahim Ghali, the leader of the Polisario, was also personally invited to the conference by the president of the African Commission. Why then Morocco was quick to a harsh decision? I haven't seen the letter of invitation by the uh, president of the African Union, uh, President Macky Sall of Senegal, which, by the way, recognized the sovereignty of Morocco over the Western Sahara and opened a consulate uh, in Laoum, the uh, administrative capital of the region. Second, as far as the groupings are concerned, uh, the African Union, although it's a co-organizer, but as per a note verbal issued by the mission of Japan to the African Union in Addis Ababa that only delegations receiving an invitation co-signed between the president of Tunisia, Pesai, and the Japanese prime minister, Kishida Fumio, that they will be allowed to attend the meeting. In this case, maybe there was a general announcement by the African Union presidency, and this was not supported by the co-signed invitation. African countries are divided on the Polisario and Western Sahara's independence, although the African Union still recognizes the area as a member of the Union. In 2020, the United States recognized Rabat's sovereignty over Western Sahara in return for Morocco's agreeing to normalize relations with Israel. Did that recognition impact African positions on the Western Sahara somehow? No, not at all. Uh, If we uh, go back to the history of the recognition, the so-called Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic uh, received uh, uh, among the African uh, Union members, Uh, They entered the organization in 1984. Uh, At the height of their entry, they received about 84 recognitions from the member states of the United Nations. Now, in September 2021, the last year, there is about 40 countries only supporting the uh, SADR. Many African countries withdrew their recognition. Currently, almost half of the AU recognized uh, Moroccan sovereignty over the Western Sahara or the, uh, the support uh, the autonomy proposal. The consensus in many countries is that this autonomy proposal is serious, credible, and realistic, which was described by the U.S. Secretary of State, uh, Anthony Blinken, last year during a visit by the Moroccan foreign minister.